Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So we're back to statics. We've talked about forces, moments, equilibrium of a body. Now we're going to put it all together. The rest of the semester, we're going to look at equilibrium of real things engineers might make and the st structural analysis, which is really important because what you don't want to build a bridge, a building, a widget, a machine, whatever it is. You don't want to build it so that it will break. So the intent of this is to figure out what are the loads and will the part exceed the, exceed the load or not? Will the strength of the part exceed the load or not? So that's the whole idea behind statics is to figure that kind of thing out before you actually build something. So we're going to start with trusses. Simple, simple things. There's structure, there are structures composed of triangles, simplifying uh, assumptions. Usually it's two-dimensional, sometimes three. We'll get into that later. Loads it are at the joints. So we can look at, uh, for example, something like this. So we can look at the forces acting as if they, well, here's the line of action of the forces. Or a pin, a pin joint. Modeled as pins. Joints are modeled as pins. Members are two force members. We don't have any three force members. We'll get into three force members later. So we have three dimensional objects, but they're symmetric. This truss here is the same as the back truss, so we can model it as a two dimensional problem. And we just have to look at the total strength of two trusses is twice the strength of one. Same thing with this bridge. Same idea. Okay. Uh, would it be stable if it were not a triangle? And the answer is no. Everybody knows that this is a stable configuration. This will tend to shear. It'll go sideways. So let's look at a real a real problem now. So we wanted to uh, we're going to get into the me what's called the method of joints, and that's where we look at each joint individually. And the first thing we need to do is draw a feed body diagram. But notice a couple things: pin joint here, pin joint here, pin joint. But there's a roller joint here or a rocker. It model it it models the same thing as a roller. So at this joint, at the A joint, there's going to be X and Y directions of force. At the C joint, only the Y direction. So at joint B, let's go back, we can have three forces. The 45 degree angle force, the uh, force B to A, and the force, uh, the applied force. Force B to C is, is looking like that. Pick a direction of the force. If you're wrong, just your equations will work backwards. So here's C, and this is FBC, except it's pointing in the other direction. FCA and FCY, as I pointed out earlier, it's only vertical. And at joint A, you have reaction forces in both the X and Y directions, and you have the forces here. So as we go through the analysis, Summation of the X in the X direction. Uh, looking at joint B, so 500 newtons minus FBC sine 45. There we go. Has to equal zero. Now is actually this should be a cosine to be technically correct, but of course sine and cosine are the same value at. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong angle. So, yes, it is sine 45. Sine 45 is correct. Okay. 500 minus FBC sine 45 equals zero. And you can calculate FBC is this. 707 newtons. Summation of forces in the Y direction, very similar. FBC cosine 45 this time going up. FBA going down, which is why it has the negative sign, and 
uh, that makes FBA equals 500 newtons too. So this times the cosine uh, gives you 500 newtons. Okay, so now we got those two. We got the 707 newtons acting at point C. And so that'll be 500 newtons acting down, 500 newtons acting to the right. Uh, that means CY has to be 500 newtons, CA has to be 500 newtons. We've already figured out CB, uh, FBA has to be 500 newtons, and we've solved the problem. So that's this is the principle behind the method of joints. We draw our free body diagram around each joint. We say, okay, let's look at the free body diagram here, and the free body diagram here, and the free body diagram here. And here's the full-blown everything that we're looking at. The members, uh, joint A is pushing up with 500 newtons. The beam is pushing down equal and opposite reactions here, equal and opposite reactions here, and so forth. Okay. So now let's use a similar technique on this structure. So it's a little more complicated structure. P in here, so we have reaction forces both in the x and y direction, applied forces here and here, a roller or rocker modeled as a roller, only normal forces at point A, and let's keep going. So uh, let's see, B, we're looking at B first. There we go, 400 newtons. And we have an e no, do we have it? No, we don't. What we have is a three, four, five right triangle. Three, four, five. Now, let me do something here. Okay, I've written down a few facts. First of all, noting it's a three, four, five right triangle, we can write down the sine and cosine of the angle. Um, I've drawn in the forces that would be acting on joint B. And let's take a look, see if that's what works out. And we see uh, some of the FX, 600 newtons minus CX. Uh, so the first thing the book does, I got a little ahead of myself. First thing in analyzing the problem is look at the overall reaction. So it just, it looks at the entire structure, looks at the free body diagram of the entire structure, and then finds the reaction forces, the overall forces. So AY um, minus CX minus 400 has to equal zero, uh, CX has to equal 600. Negative CX plus 600 has to equal zero. So CX has to equal 600. Okay, so we got that straight off. And then um, the Y equation, just like I mentioned. But we need the moment equation to, to, get, to get the reactions. So let's see. The moment is around C. So it would be the 400 times 3 plus the AY times 6. Uh, this would be a positive number counterclockwise. This would be a negative number. Uh, do we have to worry about this? Yes, we do, down at the bottom, because we do have a lever arm. So the moment about C would also include a counterclockwise. 2,400 newtons meters counterclockwise, AY, 6AY counterclockwise, and 1,200 newtons, negative 1,200 newtons, or in other words, clockwise. So 6AY, 1,200 newtons, and they negated, let's see, 600 times 4, 2,400, 400 times 3, 1,200. So indeed, they're keeping the sign convention, clock, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, equals 0. Which means um, AY has, 
when you crunch the numbers, AY has to equal 600. You'll, this, the sum of these two is 3600 divided by 6 will give you 600. So we've got A, B, and C. Or excuse me, not B, but just A and C. So now we can go to the joints. And now, this is where I got ahead of myself. So I drew up, drew this up. Looking at point B, the book starts with point A. So let's start with point A. So we'd have FBA here. And FAD. They might have the letters reversed. They might say FDA, but that's, let's take a look, see what they do. They say FAD, they say FAB, they have the arrow reversed. So let me see about that. Let's be consistent with the book. Let's make it more consistent with, get the arrows. And the same thing here, they would, so that means this arrow up here would also have to be reversed. Okay, so this is a three, four, five right triangle. So this is in this direction, FBA um, sine of theta, which would be three fifths FBA, and vertical FBA cosine theta. I'm gonna pause the video here. We'll go. We'll take this up in the next video. Stop the video here. Take up the rest of this problem in the next video.